Hello, this is Falterfire, and today's video is going to be a beta video with uh, Sharu. So Sharu is a new character. This is on version 6000. Uh, Sharu is a new character that was added uh, to the beta earlier today. So I only have Sharu at level 4 right now. Uh, they are a fairy that throws knives and also throws knives. And then afterwards, we'll throw more knives. So, first of all, I haven't yet colored this character. I need to get Sharu in my standard white and red. It's very important. We can't maintain a dress code, but dang it, we can at least make sure everybody is color coordinated. So, because this is a new character, I did want to go over, and because this is a beta, so if you're watching this as I release it, that's because you are part of the beta and you are also able to see beta versions. If you are watching this after this update is live, it is likely that a lot of the cards, that some or all of the cards that you're going to see might have changed. Uh, if you watched my Paladin videos, you're, you will have seen uh, Paladin Mark I that was totally different. I don't think Sharu is going to change anywhere near as much. I think Sharu is in a much better spot uh, than Paladin was it with Mark I, but regardless. So I'm only level 4, so I have only seen um, level 1 and level 2 cards. I do not yet have the level um, 5 and the level 8 cards. Also, give me a second. Interesting. Sometimes when clicking through... It's also a beta, which means that we're going to get some bugs. I think that may be... Yeah, it's that you can't actually click to the Sharu cards. All right, so I'm going to report that as a bug. Anyway, that's fine. We can just go through the um, collection manager in game to see those. So Sharu, um, actually, before we get here, let's talk about the first two uh, abilities, the first two passives that I have unlocked. So the first one is you create a reactive shiv whenever you discard one or more non-temporary cards. You also start combat with evasion one. Uh, so Sharu has is the first character to start with um, evasion in addition to shield, so that's interesting. Uh, you also at level four, I just unlocked this passive. I've only done two runs with Sharu so far, one at level one, one at level two. Um, and the level four passive, which I have not done a run with yet, is that you get one evasion and one powerful whenever you kill an enemy. And this is non-temporary evasion, which is nice. But this also kind of indicates that Sharu wants you to be summoning Vengeful Shades uh, to kill to farm powerful. So what are reactive shifts? Reactive shifts are one cost strikes, but even though they're strikes, they can deal damage to any enemy. They will trigger bleed, poison, and leech one time each. So bleed changed this patch. Um, prior to this patch, bleed, you would just when you put it on an enemy, you would put, you know, like five bleed on the enemy, and then at the end of the enemy's turn, they would take five damage, they would lose all their bleed. And that was all it would do on enemies. Now, bleed on enemies does the same thing as bleed on players does, which is to say, every time you play a card, an enemy with bleed will take one damage per stack of bleed they have. This means that Sharu, who has a lot of, who has ways to apply bleed, like these serrated shivs, will have a sort of flurry of cards play style that you'll see where you're you will play a whole lot of cards in one turn which will uh result in getting a lot of damage out of even two or three stacks of bleed um aside from that we do have that discard sub theme so we are going to be playing discard cards let's go look at all of sharu's cards real quick so starting with actually let's start with the comments so your common mana because every every um character has a common mana card is Tricky Focus. Tricky Focus is you gain two mana and you discard one, which is already kind of similar to Siphon uh, to Siphon Card, yeah, which is gain three mana and discard one, but with no other abilities. But with Tricky Focus, if you did discard, you get a bonus, which is one of those serrated shivs. Um, oh, it's also worth noting, Bleed is now non-mana cards. Uh, so you don't take Bleed damage and you don't deal Bleed damage when you play mana. But so you play Tricky Focus, you discard another card, you get a serrated shiv, you then can play that shiv, and now for the rest of the turn, whenever you play anything else, you will get bonus damage. 
The other thing that this will, so that's one of your cards. Your other cards, you have Blade Idol, which is unplayable, strike. So it's worth noting that this is, um, unlike the other idols, this one is a strike rather than a skill. This will deal 3x2 damage to the first enemy, and you will lose 2 mana. And you play this when it, whenever you draw it or discard it. This card can be kind of awkward, because if it is in your deck and you draw it when you aren't ready for it, uh, it will take away mana that you were hoping to use later. Um, and likewise, it can be awkward where you, for example, you don't want to discard it to Tricky Focus, because if you discard Blade Idol to Tricky Focus, you just don't get that mana, because you'll just immediately spin it on Blade Idol, which can be awkward. Um, it is in some way similar to Blavolent Idol, but it is, because it's a strike, it has more synergies, uh, and because you do play it on draw and discard it, it has some use for that reason. But I'm not the hugest fan. Your other cards, you have Venomous Maneuver, which is you gain two mana for gain evasion one this turn. Um, and this is actually the first card that we have had at common that will let you for just straight up gain evasion this turn with no downside. Uh, Sharu is very good at evading things. You don't have access to hidden, but instead you do have a lot of ways to get temporary evasion stacks in addition to the one evasion non-temporary stack you start with. So Venomous Maneuver also says um, that you create two poison shifts if you have no shield. So ideally you want to get rid of your shield before you play this so that you can get those poison shifts out, which don't do much damage, but they are more cards for your serrated shifts because again, bleed is a pretty big part of this. You also have Fey Barrier, which is 4 mana to gain 12 shield. Or, if you discard it, instead you lose 4 shield and you get Evasion 1 this turn. So, the idea here is going to be, with my deck, I have a Fey Barrier and a Venomous Maneuver. So, you're kind of trying to use the one to help set up the other. Um, we also have an Accursed Ceremony, which is going to let us summon enemy Vengeful Shades to kill. I am kind of trying this. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up liking it, but it seemed like a thing to do. Um, our mana, we have two tricky focuses. We have one plundering focus, which is gain two mana, and then we create a treasure if an enemy or an ally died this turn. Uh, we obviously only currently have uh, enemies that can die. But the idea here is that we can com combine that with uh, a cursed ceremony to get some value. We have, yeah, the tricky focuses. We have a siphon card. We have a void vision. The reason I'm not running void focus um, is that I was running it in my originally, but I found that I was closing out games too quickly to be actually getting real value out of it. So I decided that I wanted to try using the 1x plundering focus and the 1x resolute focus instead. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. So we have void visions, draw one, discard one. We have rummage, discard one, draw two. We have the one venomous maneuver, the one fey barrier, and we have a frost strike because I wanted the ability to get frost rune. It is also possible that I will end up I've seen that one of the other players who is in the beta is running uh, Garot, which is now give Bleed 2 to the first enemy, but because Bleed is now much, much better, that seems kind of tempting. Uh, the other one is Barbed Gale is a consideration. It's going to give all enemies Bleed 1, which is pretty useful. I think actually I do want to try a Barbed Gale over the Frost Strike. We also have the ability to apply a decent number of debuffs. We don't have access to weak or tough in this deck, and we are pretty reliant on being aggressive. We don't have that many defensive cards, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So in the card pool, uh, we have Benevolent Idol, which is just a great way to have some defense uh, in a discard deck. Ancestral Memory, we have Forbidden Rites, because of course we, if we're summoning shades. I've got Increasing Mana right now as my um, other epic mana card, because I think that I'm drawing enough that Spry Vigor is unreliable and we don't have enough spells for Twinning Ritual. Um, aside from that, we have uh, Sanctity, of course. We have... Oh, I wanted to go through, of course, the other Charu cards. I, I realize this is kind of being all over the place, but sorry about that. So, cards that we're not playing. Irritating Dust, you trigger Bleed five times on any enemy, which doesn't seem bad, but I think that we are going to struggle to apply enough Bleed to really pay that off. Uh, Fey Ruse, you create is one mana, create two leeching shivs, lose six health. And then you play this card when it is discarded. So the thing about this one is that it gives you, um, is that this is a way to get value from discarding a card. It does lose health, but because it gives leech, 
uh, it is possible to get that health back. And we will have a couple other ways to do things. We do have Mind Sap, which is the other another Sharu card uh, that is a mana card. And it is discard two if you do gain six mana. So this is like a uh, Siphon card's older sibling. The big note here is that unlike Siphon card, you do have to discard the cards. Um, but Sharu likes discarding, so that's fine. Handful of Knives. This card won me the... Um, is, is a large part of why I won my level two run. Uh, I had three copies of it. When upgraded, it creates three of each. And so that is a whole bunch of bleed and poison and leech. And because the, you can start with the bleed shivs. So you get, even before you, you count the relatively small amount of damage from the shivs that it makes, uh, you get, you know, one damage from the first shiv, then two bleed damage from the second, then three from the third for a total of six, plus an additional uh, 18 from the other shivs. And again, that's not counting anything else you uh, play afterwards. And also, the other thing about it is um, that because this is nine strikes you're playing, if you have any powerful, that's nine hits. If you have any runes, that's very good. If you have any um, ways to, in any of the cards, if you have like an abyssal dagger, that's incredibly good. So other cards that I'm looking at. So, that is all of the shot. Oh, and Eviscerating Strike. Deal 2x4 damage to the first enemy. Upgrade all your shivs. Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to play with this one yet, but it seems pretty good, potentially. We do have... Um, it makes the reactive shivs... Okay, so it makes reactive shivs free. That's worthwhile. Um, and it makes the others uh, just stronger. And you'll see we do end up with a lot of shivs, even without Handful of Knives. So, other cards... I should have a timestamp for when this actual run starts if you're somehow still hanging in here and you haven't noticed. Okay, Mystical Bloom. So this is one of the new cards. Um, this is a new generic card. Uh, you apply Arcane to any enemy equal to 50% of your max mana. Boring. Who cares? The important thing is, if this is in your hand, you gain Growth 1 anytime you play any non-mana card. Uh, which means that we're playing a lot of cards. We will very rapidly stack a, quite a lot of Growth. And then this will actually potentially apply, be uh, doing a significant amount of arcane. We have demonic power because powerful is very very good for this deck. Eviscerating strike, sanctity, handful of knives. Aside from that, we have fury concentration uh, for mana. Pact of insight. I'm not sure if that is a card that I want here. Um, I've wanted to try it. I'm not certain that this will end up being a pact of insight deck. We have. Other mana cards, uh, we're not running Absorb Armor. We've got Hunt, because it's pretty good. Arms Race, because we've got a lot of strikes. Uh, we've got, we've got Weary Concentration. We've got uh, Blazing Ritual. We've got Tricky Focus, because that's just very good. Um, I think I want to put Frost Strike here. And then I just have to figure out what I'm cutting. We've got Sorcerer's Accretion, which is another similar thing to similar to the one we were looking at earlier this is so it starts with deal six damage to the enemy for five which you know bargain that's one more damage the amount of mana you paid look at that deal uh, seriously though the reason that it's good potentially i haven't tried it yet is that you increase that value by two whenever you play another non-mana card while it is in your hand so in theory this scales up pretty quick to pretty big numbers we'll see if that ends up playing out in practice um aside from that we have yeah the favor is Power Surge is a way to get powerful, but it's only one stack. I'm, I'm considering cutting Power Surge just because I don't know how much I like it if we can't upgrade it. And I feel like we've got other things that we want to commit our upgrades to. Surprise Attack did get nerfed somewhat. It is now only one mana, but you only apply one stack of Ambush and Vulnerable. Uh, I think it's still probably good, but I may change. I say that we are playing, so the, the criticals are potentially useful, but the Vulnerable is less valuable when you're doing a lot of these very, very small hits, I think. Um, so I may end up deciding that I don't want that at some point. Sharpened Senses is a card that I am also considering because it's a very good defensive option. Um, I'm not running Brainstorm. I think I'm relying on other card draw instead. Contemplate is incredibly good because we care about discards. Um, I think Rummage is another card I might want. We are running Sanctuary because I think that's worthwhile. We're running Void Shield. Yeah, I think we will put in Rummage. I think Rummage is good. And what would we cut for it, though? Might just cut Surprise Attack. I 
think the price tag is a little bit awkward. Okay, so that's all done. Let's see how this goes. Oh, market. I already bought everything in the market. Uh, the market is now more expensive. Uh, it costs, uh, so the last two items now cost 1,500 and 2,500 instead of 1,000 and 2,000. So it's a total cost of 5,000 gold to buy all five items, uh, which does make that a little bit more cost prohibitive. So normally you will only want to grab the ones you actually care the most about, but I have a little bit of gold, so I just bought everything. And here we go. All right, so which of these do we want? I'm kind of leaning towards a void shield. I think having a way to gain shield on discard is nice, but also tricky focus and precarious draw are nice things to have. I think we'll take the void shield and see how it goes. I think more starting evasion is actually very tempting, but so is starting purity. I think we'll go with starting purity. And let's see what we are looking at here. Um, I think we go through here and we try and get mana font because it's just good. So last running strike also changed. It now applies, gives a bleed one to the first enemy and deals six X2 damage to it, which means it is more damage. Uh, it used to be four X2 and it used to give vulnerable two and it's a bleed source, which is nice. Uh, Corrupted Blast is unchanged, and it's still good. Oh, Thorn Whip has also changed. You now get Reflect this turn per damage dealt, which is very bad for us because uh, that is only useful if you don't evade, and we're planning to evade, so. Okay, so let's start by pitching that and see what we can find. So you can see right away we get this Reactive Shiv because we discarded a card. We're going to discard another card. All right. And we are going to start by just beating down this one. Uh, it actually leaves it at one health, which is a little unfortunate. I probably should have just killed it outright, but I figured we would probably be fine. Which might have been a mistake. We will see. One of the things is that we don't have a ton of AoE. That is one thing that the Barbed Gale does do for us. Um... We can pitch that. We get another serrated. I should have done that first. Um, let's play that. And we're starting to stack powerful, which is nice. And there we go. So yeah, we're down a little bit of health. We do need to find a little bit of healing. Uh, Mind Sap seems kind of tempting. We are a little bit high on mana at that point, but that's not really a problem. That's just an opportunity to find, to take some cards that give us more. Start by pitching that. And then I think we pitch this. Don't think we want that. And then it just becomes a question of whether we wanted to set up that or not. And I think we do. Because then, yeah, now we have a lethal on that one. that we can do this which gets us that kill we do now unfortunately explode which takes away one of our powerful yeah the curse ceremony is a little bit awkward without more access to aoe so we do now get our poison shivs and we can get straight shiv out and then just oh, barrage out some damage. 
So you can already sort of see how Sheru is working. We are doing a barrage of damage and getting value. Arcane Aegis is interesting. I think we're going to take Pact of Insight. Poison Band is actually potentially very useful to us here. But it, like, if it weren't up against Duplication Tome, I would take Spider Band because we do have the ability to apply poison from our... Um, where, where is it? From Venomous Maneuver. But you can't pass up Duplication Tome. I mean, maybe you can. I can't. And... Off we go to fight the Evado bot. I think we're actually going to copy both of these. Because I just let this get out a lot of bleed, which is nice. And then... And there we go. I may have wasted uh, one of the whatchamacallits there. Just kind of throwing out cards. Let's go bonk. So we know that we are drawing um, these shrivels, which unfortunately don't give us um, reactive shivs. And this is probably a little bit of a mistake. I didn't need to do that summon and take a little bit of damage because of it. Still not a huge deal. Curious what order this is going to go in. Okay. Probably went left to right if I had to guess. And I do have to guess because I have no way to know. And that kills you. And you are effectively dead. Okay, uh, there's the Frost Strike, which I do want. I do also not hate this Swift Strike, but I think I want to get this Frost Strike set up. Uh, Dancing Blade is great when we have a Frost Strike, and I think I'm cutting the... See, the Accursed Ceremony would be good going into this fight that we're about to hit, which is the main reason I may not cut it. But... Mm. Hmm... Hmm... I'm just not really a fan, I think. I may also cut the Plundering Focus. We haven't managed to trip it yet. Let's cut the Accursed Ceremony, and we'll assume that things will be fine. I would take a Forbidden Rites. I just don't think Accursed Ceremony is doing quite as enough for us. Okay, let's pitch that one. Get bleed out. And we may as well do that. Which will get us a frozen. Which will also mean that we do not get doomed. Which is not a concern for us this fight. Um, and yeah, let's see. Because here it doesn't actually matter that much. Yeah, it is probably going left to right there. Pitch that. Pitch that. I think I'm going to duplicate these and just apply a lot of bleed. Because, yeah, you just get a lot of damage from bleed. Especially because the reactive shivs will trip the bleed twice effectively. Alright, well, that two purity is not going to last long. We can afford to play one of those. We can afford to play two of those. Um, I want to get this out, but I don't want to risk burning a... I suppose we're good. I was going to say I don't want to risk burning the... Um, 
the shock on a purity, but I don't think that's a real danger here. Start by discarding the Fey Barrier. Okay, yeah, because now we can use these. That'll deal with that. And because it did zero damage, took away that uh, Labra stack. Now we can get a freeze off, which is nice. Let's go... Donk. I think I do want that for next turn. Now, unfortunately, we don't get um, the mana, but we do still get to discard the one card we had, which was which got a shield and got us um, a who's my what because of the effect. We can create these. We can discard them. We can barb Gale, get more bleed out. And then get some mana. So we are going to explode here. But we have plenty of purity, which helped a lot. And we have basically one at this point. So I said that I was looking forward to uh, mana font, but I think we actually would rather have potentially some of... Okay, I want to try this Mystical Bloom. I want to see if it's any good. Because um, the other thing is, like, there's a lot of cards in this deck that I want to try out that I haven't seen yet. Bag of Tools versus Dancing Blade is a really tough choice, actually. This is one of the downsides to being only level uh, four is that I don't have access to all of the trinket slots yet. Uh, what is the upgrade on this? Still only growth one whenever we play a non-man card. Makes that less valuable. I really like Tricky Focus Plus because that gives us two serrated shivs. Rummage Plus is also very, very good though. But I think, okay, this is still only bleed one. Uh, this is three shivs and two evasion. That's not bad. This actually... Okay, so that loses more shield but gets us two evasion. Or So that's interesting. I think we're going to upgrade the rummage. That is not what I meant to upgrade. I meant to upgrade the tricky... Whatever. I'm awake. I'm tempted to cut the Fey Barrier or the Void Shield. But I don't think I quite want to do that yet. I think we're just going to roll. Part of this process is just figuring out which cards I like and which ones I don't. I think we do want to go after this fight. Uh, I would love to have a mana dance. This is a fight where evasion is not going to do as much as I might like. Okay. So we can do that. We can upgrade, I think, the Void Visions. Thank you, Vulnerable. I think we want to get bleed out on one of the back ones. What we really want, yeah, I was going to say this is Barbed Gale, although this is a pretty lousy point in the turn to get it. Uh, we can, though, apply a whole lot of Arcane here, which might be what we want to do, because we could kill this front one. Actually... Here's what we're going to do. And then we're going to pitch both of these. Which will give us a bunch of uh, growth. Wait a second. Why do we get... Are we getting growth from our mana cards? That's a bug. So we're now applying 15 uh, Arcane, so that's going to kill you. And then we can apply 17 Arcane, which is going to not kill, but do damage to you. And then we're going to take a relatively small amount of damage in return. Play that before we play the Rummage, because we want to be able to get... Because uh, we didn't want to... We wanted the shield stuff to work out correctly. Words are difficult, okay. I think we're going to pitch these two. Which can draw us four cards. We can discard this. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's a bug report. So let me actually add a bit more detail. All right. So now, 
let's see. We're going to rummage away the barbed gale, because I can't quite afford it. Would have loved to have seen some mana, but that's fine. It is interesting how quickly you go from uh, we're good on mana to I really need more mana. Alright, there we go. That actually works out great. You're going to die. You're going to explode. And there we go. Treasure map is great. Alright. I think we are probably going to duplatome the... Oh, man. In that case, we'll duplatome both of these. How much growth do we need? I mean, sure. So we now get a completely reasonable amount of um, getting a completely reasonable amount of growth every time we do anything. All right. Let's pitch this, which will create us <laughs> two things. Uh, let's go ahead and play that just to get it out of the hand. Do that again just to get it out of the hand mostly. So we do now, so we can do this. We do need to find ways to, do. we do need to find cards that we are willing to discard. I think we pitch those two. All right. We can draw some cards. We can do that. Okay, so it does appear to be not tripping off of everything we do, only some of the things we do. Let's pitch that. We want to discard that. And then we get <laughs> 36 arcane. Thirty-nine RK. That feels good. Okay. Happy with that one. Uh, there's the mana dance. I do really want that Fey Ruse. Um. Oh man, Serrated Cleaver is nuts. This run is over. We have won. Uh, this is very good. This just makes this actually actively health gain, which is nice. All right, let's see. So I think the first thing we want to do is we want to get bleed on these jerks. And then we want to draw some cards. Let's see what our tools are. I do like upgrading one of these. Okay. Now I think we duplatome, but before we duplatome, we need to make space in hand. Let's give another blade to you. We're gonna go bonk, bonk. And then trying to think through whether or not we can get um, a treasure off of Plundering Focus this turn. I think the answer is probably yes. I just have to figure out what we're doing to get there. Because it involves taking that one out of the fixture. Goodbye. Draw some cards. This will... Yeah, this will actually kill both of them. Because this one will die to bleed and that one will die too death. I think we need the Predator's Focus. I think we need more mana. Alright. Let's 
start by pitching those two, which will get us a lot of cards to work with. Cost us not quite all of our shield, which is a little bit unfortunate because since we aren't getting um, to getting rid of all of our shield, we don't get um, everything we want. Let's focus on taking. I should focus on taking on that one actually. But so now we've got three leech, which means that we can trigger it a bunch of times and get value because this, that. Oh, whoops. We didn't finish healing. That's fine. But we do get a treasure. There's that. I don't really want to bother copying it yet because this seems like because we're already most of the way through playing out this turn. And I don't want to waste it when we're not going to get that much actual value. Let me think. I need to get no, there's just no way that we get out to enough for this to go and play it. Okay, so we are going to explode. Take a little bit of damage. It's not too bad, though. There's a stack of purity, which is annoying, but we can work through that. Okay, so that's our unupgraded rummage. Question is, do we do Platome yet? I think we don't. I think we are probably playing this outright. So this will get rid of that bleed. And that's right, we still have... I was trying to figure out why we had all this bleed, and the answer is because we got the Butcher's Blade. Okay, now we're in a good spot to dupletome. Should figure out what I am exactly dupletoming. Pop you. We can... I don't know that we want to dupletome this. I don't know that we don't want to. I think we're dupletoming these two. Because I think we are going to need the shield. Oh. Yeah, we ran out of space in hand. And that was a mistake. I kind of just want to play both of these. I just kind of want to play that. Um, that's what we get. We've got a pretty good chance of getting mana. Okay, now we can discard both of these, which I like. That gives us a decent amount of shield. Oh, we've got a decent amount of evade, so we're actually good to go now. We can get some of our health back from that. And then we can pop you. And pop you, because you're going to die. That works out very nicely. Uh, that doesn't actually do anything for us this turn. Do we have... Yes, we have enough because of the bleed from Butcher's Knife. Butcher's Knife is very, very, very good with this character. That doesn't do anything for us. This, unfortunately, is currently bug. So this is one of the new items. We got a, we got a lot of new items this patch. Frost Robes is one of them. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't actually give permanent Frost Rune and per permanent Frost Barrier. It only gives starting Frost Rune and starting Frost Barrier. It's still pretty useful, but it's not as good as we would like. Forbidden Rights is interesting, uh, but I think Nature's Blessing is better because uh, that lets us more aggressively play around ble bleeding out our own health. Treasure Map is very good. I think now is the time that I take the Tricky Focus upgrade. And I think I cut the Venomous Maneuver. I haven't been impressed with it yet. Right, Emerald Dragon, I kind of will wish I had had the Venomous Maneuver. We unfortunately can't fight these guys. We would love to have Ice Shards, but they're bugged on this patch. So uh, they just lock up the game if you try and fight them. I think we go through here. Um, Pulverize doesn't do anything. Well, no, we want Elemental Strike. We absolutely are going to go after Elemental Strike because we can force the matter. I don't think we want Bloody Rage. We might take Devouring Strike. Let me just start here. Okay. So start by popping this. All right. 
I think we will copy the mystical bloom and then we will copy the mystical blooms because it's funny. And then we will draw a card and gain a ludicrous amount of value. Uh, we need to make space in hand for this Fey Ruse, which we can't easily do, unfortunately. Unless we pitch, so if we pitch both of these, our hand just immediately fills up. I think we just have to actually outright play this, which is unfortunate. And then we are going to pitch these two. We're now at a full stack of growth, which, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, we can pitch this, which will get us another stack of bleed to hand out. All right, these all hand out a stack of bleed because of uh, the butcher's knife, which is just incredibly good. Um, let's see, 30. I do want to get that, but I think we're just going to go with Yeah, this is um, very silly. And this is mostly just like Duplatome doing Duplatome things um, more than anything uh, inherent with the cards. I do like having Sanctuary. Uh, we won't play it very often, but I like having it uh, as an option that we could use. Go ahead and just get the max HP and max mana from that event. From this event, we will, oh yeah, there's, may as well just do that. And now we attempt to destroy all of these jerks. Pact of Insight. Um, we can start by doing that. And then we can do this. Okay. Bag of tools. Always lucky. Upgrade Predator's Focus. Copy the Mystical Blooms. So, this will actually do a damage to, do damage to an enemy, which is why we, because it applied Bleed, and because Bleed triggers after the card finishes playing, uh, a card that applies Bleed will immediately deal, will immediately get you value. Let's pitch this. Okay. Um, if we play one of these, we will actually strip off the uh, taunt, so we would be able to target the back one. But we don't. And we may as well do that because we are at a point where uh, we otherwise just do not have stuff to do. All right, so we got 35 growth. That's gotta be enough for turn one. All right, uh, pretty unlucky opening. Although this helps a lot. Because now, there we go. We get this treasure. Uh, let's just pitch both of them. We can actually pitch that for value. And this is what I was talking about, where we can just eat the bleed off with that, which will get us the healing. All right, let's, uh, do we have any actual, no, but we are, we do, we have the frost strike and we are going to pick up elemental strike. So the arms race is good. Uh, making weak and vulnerable to better is always good. And yet we are going to get elemental strike here. Go ahead and do that. I uh, should have saved that, but we didn't end up getting um, that. We didn't end up getting um, the inkwell anyway, so it's fine. Alright. Open with that. Get the bleed out. Although again, we have 
a lot of bleed just naturally sitting around. Um, pitch that. Yeah, so much bleed. Um, just kind of ridiculous. It doesn't even, like, the mystical bloom doesn't even matter at this point. Um. Just guaranteed to draw us this, which is not the most useful thing, but. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is lethal because of the bleed. Because we had 14 bleed out. Um. Reroll. Elemental Strike, absolutely. Uh, so there's now, this one is very interesting. It's not amazing for me, for this deck specific, or it is very good for Sharu, but I'm never taking it over Serrated Cleaver because Serrated Cleaver is just such nonsense with this character. Sure, we'll take that. Um, this is actually not the best upgrade. I think we're gonna cut the Frost Strike because it was only there uh, before we had the Frost, the uh, Elemental Strike. For upgrades, I really like Tricky Focus. I really like upgrading like a res the treasure map upgrade. I really like Pact of Insight Plus. Um, I don't hate Fey Barrier because that is just, um, it's gonna lose six shield and gain us a bunch of evasion this turn because that's just even more evasion. Uh, that actually, I like that a lot uh, since we're kind of relying on that anytime we have to end turn. The mind sap is also proving difficult to use um, in some ways, just because like it's hard for us to find a space where we have two cards we want to discard. Well, let's go ahead and get that out. Let's think. Okay. I think we upgrade the tricky focus. I actually kind of want to just copy these. Because they will do a considerable amount. Right, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Because now... Interesting. Unstable Darkstone isn't working. That's at about 48 minutes in. Make a note of that. Go ahead and use this, which should draw us, yep, the elemental strike, which we can play to ensure that we have um, that next turn. We can go ahead and play this, even though it's not gonna do much for us. Yeah, we do start with one stack of Frost Barrier, which is nice. Let's pitch both of our shield cards. Get bleed out on you, so that you are slowly dying. Uh, this is lethal, which means this gets us a treasure. And that's lethal. All right. Uh, Rocky Hide is normally pretty good, but we really don't need it. I like Blazing Ritual a lot. I don't hate Warcry. Um, think we're taking Blazing Ritual because it's a good mana card that isn't dependent on whatever it was. Let's go ahead and take the buff. All right. Drakes are annoying, uh, but we have a lot of multi-hit, so they shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if we can get super lucky on Mystical Bloom value. Not really. It's okay. I 
think I am duplicating these two. I actually don't know that I care about this ectoplasm. I think we're planning to, to win faster than that. Let's see. I don't think, so I think I pitch this and this. So now, do that, just immediately redraw <laughs> Elemental Strike. All right. So we get a bunch of Leeching Shivs. Ideally, we'd like to kill one of them uh, so that we can get a treasure off of that. To that end, I think we discard this. So that is going to, yeah. Okay, so this will now be lethal there. We can pitch the treasure map. Uh, get more bleed out. Um, yeah, sure. This is a lot of mana, but it's totally worth it. Let's just tag you. You are all now super bleeding. And then we can just... Um, I think we pitch this one, because worst case, because our current plan is that we're just kind of going to pitch whatever else we draw to fund this. And then we can actually play out everything. Let's go see if we can get a kill. Yeah, so we can get that out and then this out. Okay, we didn't quite get lethal, but we did after at the end of turn. And we had enough evasion that it didn't matter. Okay, contemplate's very good. Here we go. So this fight could actually cause problems, potentially. Um, I don't think it will, but we'll see. Just because we can get shocked and we can end up having a bad day for that reason. I think we may end up cutting the Void Shield. I don't know that we have needed it so far, but we'll see. Uh, it is nice that it's just like a thing to discard, but if we don't need the shield, then why use it? Pitch both of these, which gets us value. You're going to pitch this, I think. Because we're not getting hit this turn anyway. And that pops the shock barrier, which is nice. Alright, more card draw is great. Hmm. Don't really have a great inkwell target here, unfortunately. I don't think it's worth playing that. I should have started with these. Let me get this freeze out. All right. Doing pretty good. Um, it's a little bit of an awkward turn in, in terms of what are we going to duplatone. I do still think we're duplatoning that. And that. We are absolutely going to get out Blazing Ritual. I think there's a very good chance we end up getting shocked this turn. I think that's just how this turn is going to end up having to play out. But maybe not. Actually, no, because right now we are winning the... We are going to get whatever off before... Get that out to get bleed out first. Pitch that. And pitch this. And that's actually great. Okay. So this is going to take away that so that we aren't in danger of um, the shock barrier. We don't get great hits on this, the, the shock. That is the one, one of our big weaknesses. But we can pitch both of these, which means that we are now 
not in danger of getting um, hit because we have enough evasion. And I think we're just going to, at this point, go for the super explode. And that seems like a good place to end the turn. Evade all three. And let's see, figuring out how to get to um, everything we want. And we have still a frost rune, so um, should we get the bonus frost rune from our equipment, which is why we still have one. And then that will ensure that we have lethal. Yeah, the the whatever the this seems potentially very good. It is another strike, so it does fight with um, whatever though. I am uncertain. I really don't like I, lightning community is just so bad now. Um, I really would rather have Dragonform. I would have taken. I'm not taking Lightning Communion. Increasing mana is also kind of tempting. Um, increasing mana is very good. Mana is a little bit of a problem for us. But I want to try Best Rating Strike because I haven't yet. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, if you insist. So I think we need to upgrade mana. Or we can upgrade Treasure Map. Let's upgrade Treasure Map. Um... And then I think we don't need the Void Shield. Okay, so we are fighting Bailator. Cool. You can evade a Bailator. Um, I think we are... I don't know if we're going to fight all these elites. We are definitely going to go fight this. So we're going to start here or here, and then go through Event, uh, Burb, and then Event, Event. So, all right, these are the same fight. We'll go here. These guys are paying the butt. Let's get that out. Just immediately redraw it. Oh no, that's right, we have another thing here. So now, I think we do this. Which will upgrade all of our shivs. And then we duplatome the serrated shifts. Um, I need to get one more hit out on this one before I draw cards. It's fine. Just end up <laughs> Frost barrier, which I totally remembered. Uh, we can pitch this, which will get us a whole lot of things. Get out even more. Um. Oh no, you died before I could get more health off of you. Uh, I think we just take another arms race. Persecute is also not bad, but I think we just take another arms race. Um. Yeah, there's nothing nothing that could compel me to remove that serrated cleaver. It is just too good. We didn't get any of the... We haven't gotten any of the handfuls of knives that I used um, initially, but... Okay. Draw one, pitch that. So that turns on the arms race. Get that going. It's not really the one we wanted to see. Let's see what we get out of this. Hmm. Why do we copy here? Maybe we don't. But I think we do. Oh, that's what we do. We're going to play this to get it out of hand. Make space. And we're going to play this, which gives us a zero cost copy. And then we need to clear space in hand, which is going to be tricky because when we discard things, we um, create shivs. I can discard this and it won't create a shiv. Right, it's going to create a shiv from that, but 
And there we go. We're going to copy these two. Get a bleed out. There's Elemental Strike. You only got to upgrade one shiv, but I think we'll be fine. We can pitch two things, which I think is going to be those two. Why didn't we get two reactive shifts? I think that's a bug. Uh, that was at uh, a little over an hour in. All right, let's draw more cards. Pitch that. Go ahead and get more bleed out. Go ahead and do that. Ideally, we want to just kill something, I think, uh, so we can get a treasure. So do a thing. Let me actually. All right. Let's go get our treasure. So it's apparently not a bug. Uh, you are not supposed to get um, whatever. You're not supposed to get, um, if you discard multiple cards to one effect, you're only supposed to get one reactive shift. That's good to know. Uh, Sorcerer's Secretion, that seems good, considering that um, the Mystical Bloom has also been just ridiculous. Uh, Abyss Dagger is the only thing I would consider taking over Serrated Cleaver, but I don't think it's as good. This is actually better than that for us. Oh, and I need to get a screenshot of that, because that is a new item that we ha I have not made a note of yet. All right, moving on. Let's... All right, we've got a purity buff. That's not bad. Especially going into this specific fight. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's see what we get out of this. Um, try a card. We have established that um, this is bugged, so we're going to discard it here in a moment. I think we're going to... Hmm. We don't have any card draw, do we? It's a little bit unfortunate. I think we still are going to duplitome these two. And get more bleed out. Um, so we're just going to pitch these two first, because otherwise we're just not going to have any space in hand. Go ahead and get this out. And then we can just go ahead and pop you. And you. For some value. So we lose. We are cursed. Very slightly. Alright. Let's discard that. Because I want to get out, um, I want to get out Elemental Strike, even though it means not getting, actually, let's do that first. There we go. This will force the shuffle, which is actually kind of nice for us. We can pitch that, because we don't need it. We can discard these two. Draw some cards. This friendo is absolutely toast this turn, I think. Should consider doing this just because that is the one that uh, gives us the most value. But I didn't. 
Oh, I should have played the Sanctuary because we are absolutely taking damage at the end of turn. Not that it's a huge problem, but... And we can go ahead and freeze you out. Okay. Pitch that. I think we want to do this first because we know it's going to draw that. And I would like, um, yeah, I'd like these to give bleed too. Uh, yeah, I like applying bleed. Um, and we can pop this one with this, but that's not... Actually, let's just do this, because that's going to let us yeah, get lethal here without having to lose any health. Oh man, handful of knives. Okay, this is what I was looking for. I think I like it more than Ruinous Gamble. I think... Oh man, I'm torn between whether or not I want to upgrade it. Because the, up, the, the upside to upgrading it is that it's incredibly good. The downside is uh, we don't have enough space in our hand a lot of the time. No, we're not here not to upgrade a handful of knives. And away we go. And we've got a whole bunch of uh, elite fights between us and the end. But I got a good feeling about this. Let's do that. Let's see. So this puts us down. So we need we need one more space in hand before I can. Let's do this. All right. It's an elemental strike. We do still need more space in hand. Okay, now, I want to get copies of both of these. I just want to do a copy of that. I want to duple tome everything. Can I duple tome everything? No, I think the goal here is that we're going to try and dump hand if we can. Um, and try and play uh, this twice with a uh, doubling spyglass, which could be tricky, but I'm willing to make the effort. Okay. So we're going to play Breach Wanderers is a game of about quick reactions. Ready? Okay, there we go. We successfully did that. We got out enough cards that we, because um, it makes the cards in order. We were able to get some out of our hand before we took, um, before it counted our max hand size. Um, let's go and just pop you. So that we are low stress for this. Just a completely reasonable amount of um, bleeding. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's an accretion. Well, I suppose that's sort of like the shock, so I don't know if that counts. There we go. Well, lethal. Um, ravenous intent is decent. Draws, gives us vengeance, heals us a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is actually not that valuable to us. Neither is this, not compared to what we have. We're just moving on. Um, give me a second. All right. Um... Anyway, sorry, I had tabbed out to have a discussion about wording. This needs to happen first. This needs to happen. Oh, right, this is the new tool. 
poisoned bomb. Let me get a screenshot of that. Okay, you have poison eight and frail one to the first two enemies. Temporary. That's interesting. But I think we are going to discard it here. So I think we just. Yeah. I guess we didn't get any more discard uh, outlets. Hopefully we'll find one here. That's unfortunate. So we still don't have any way to discard. But we can get a whole lot of bleed shivs. Um, and we can get a whole lot of bleed shivs and upgrade them. Unfortunately, the math here doesn't quite work out the way we want it to. Because we are going to end up down, miss, just short one because of how things work out. But... Not too bad. Okay, so I think we're going to play the Sanctuary for once. Um, just go ahead and get some leech out. Pretty unfortunate turn. This is a lot better. I want to copy this, but I don't know that we have space in hand for it. Um, trying to figure out how we make things line up the way we want. Okay, let's get lots of bleed out on you. Um, Okay, so we ideally want this after we play this, but that is going to be difficult to line up. Let's see what we get out of this. Okay. So here's what I think happens. I think we are not using Duplatome. I think we are pitching both of these. Because I think our plan, let me do some math. Uh, let's see, it's 12, 13, 14. So we need eight. We can't quite play out everything, that's unfortunate. Okay. Here's the plan instead. We're just gonna do this. which is going to work out for us. Let's get more bleed out on you first, which is also going to have the fun benefit of freezing you. We need out another freeze, although we don't quite kill that one. Uh, so we are now somewhat cursed. I kind of knew going in that this particular fight was going to be a little bit trickier. Okay. So again, want to get bleed out here. Okay. So. One of the big questions here is whether I am going to figure out a way to get a handful of knives out this, or whether I'm going to end up playing Sanctuary, or if I'm just going to count on getting the kill. And I think the answer ends up being that I am playing it. I think I'm not playing Rummage. I can't afford to play a copy of Handful of Knives, so that's not happening.
Uh, sequencing is hard. Okay, this one's definitely dead. And that one is also dead. And then we have enough shield that we do not take any damage, so it's fine. Now we just have to finish off this fight. And we have plenty of evasion. So. 16 growth, or 16 uh, whatever. It's not quite enough. I guess we can do this. And then we can duplatome this and that. And then even though we don't have quite everything that we want going on, it more or less works out. There we go. Uh, Arcane Strike is interesting. I don't know that we need any of these. We can't afford a reroll. We only have two more fights left. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and reroll. Um, I think I just want another tricky focus. And away we go. All right. Start with that. Let's see what we get out of this. Okay. And we upgrade this. Pitch that. So we now have plenty of shivs. Okay. So now we can do this, which is going to be pretty good. Mm. I'm debating if I want to use this or if I want to try. I think I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how the math works out, but math is difficult and I'm too lazy to do it. So. So we need to play out at least one of these first before we get the uh, free copy. Kind of just trying to even out the bleed on them. They should be dead because yeah, we just have so many cards. Um, we'll take the hungry focus. This doesn't do anything for us. No, this doesn't anything for us. It's all gone. That upgrade is still is actually pretty good if we're possibly going to be copying it. Um, I also kind of like Arms Race Plus now that we have two strikes that we want to draw. And here we go. All right. So, yeah, we don't, by volume, have quite as much discard stuff as we did at earlier in the run, which is unfortunate, but... So we're still doing reasonably well. I think this is what I want to play last. Even if we don't get... Even if it's going to be pretty tricky to actually get out. Ah, uh, nope, 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 nope. Okay, we did it. Successfully got all of the bonuses. Let's go ahead and just, I think, get out all of that. Because I just don't want to deal with both of them. And this one is much, much weaker, and therefore the easier of the two to kill. All right. That is unfortunately not the one we wanted of the two, but... And we now are going to take actually a pretty considerable amount of damage. So what happened there was we evaded one of those hits because the front one dying uh, gave us a... Um, the front one dying meant that we tripped one of the passives. So... And I think we are going to doubling Spyglass the Sanctuary. As lame as that is. Which kind of needs to happen. I think we are also pitching this. Which does have the advantage... Oh, I'm sequencing things wrong. It's fine. 
doing that. Okay, so now we get to heal some, which is nice. Pick one of those. Get one of the two things. Oh, I am just playing out cards dumbly. Like a big old dum dum. Draw those. Got to pick one of them. Uh, let's see what we get. Sure. Actually works out pretty nicely because that means that we will have all of the value. Can we get a freeze out here? Yeah. They're still lightly cursed, but that's not too bad. And yeah, we, we draw cards in weird in weird order sometimes just because um, we are shuffling so much that sometimes we just won't find key cards until we have gone through our deck a couple times. So we can play one of the two, but not both. That's fine, because we only need to play one of the two. There's a win. All right. Um, adaptative spell is always great, and that's probably the one we are taking. Um, I don't know that there's anything here I want to cut, so we're just moving on. And we are going to rest, get some max mana, because I'm too lazy to cut any cards. Uh, I'll take a temporary buff, though. Again, nothing that could compel me to get rid of this. Okay, so there is shock ropes. That is indeed a thing, because I figured it probably was. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and reroll. Ooh, okay. So there is... I kind of expected this to be a thing, because we've seen a couple of their ally cards. Um, and then we don't actually want any of this. We're going to discard it. But Wand of Control is another new thing. Uh, so... Wand of Control seems fine, I guess. It's pretty narrow. It's obviously useful if you're playing a summoning deck and not useful if you aren't. Um, but the summoning deck doesn't generally like, doesn't generally care about the weapon. So, you know, nice to have an option. Let's keep getting max mana. Um, energy for artifact. Uh, ooh. This is better than that. Actually, do we have any ways to apply weak or vulnerable? We may not. I think we only have tools to do it. Yeah, in that case, in that case, that can go. And we'll take that. And we'll take this. And I have to get a screenshot of the fact that we have stuff. All right, um, enough stalling. Let's do this final fight. Just hoping the recording doesn't explode from repeatedly pausing it. Lack of discards, still kind of a problem with this deck right now uh, with where we're at, but it's fine. Okay. Trying to think what the best way to get through um, all of the. That's going to be fine. All the PRD is going to be. I think this works out pretty nice. Because uh, I do, I don't want to spend a purity on the freeze. Okay, so we're going to play this. We are going to do this. There we go. Freeze handled. We get a shock out, which is nice. We can play that for even more value. And we get 70 damage, which seems reasonable. 28x2 incoming damage is rude, but we can hopefully do something about that. Um, that's not happening this turn. Michael. 
All right, we can dupletome if we want to, but I don't think we do. Or we, we want to rummage first. I think we're going to rummage away these two, which will draw us the shrivels, which we will just pitch with that. Um, so the question becomes, how are we planning to deal with um, all this incoming damage? And the answer is, eh, shrug. It'll be fine. We're going to spyglass the handful of knives. And, okay, yeah, we are just going to absolutely blitz down with bleed because two bleed per thing play per uh, strike when you have yeah we have so many hits and the thing is frozen yeah um things off by arcane detonating and that's a victory and that is an in screen so we should actually get some new cards here so I'm excited to see what those are so give me a second all right uh, so these new cards reckless charge Three mana, deal 6x3 damage to the first enemy, summon one enemy vengeful shade if you can't lose eight health. Okay, so that actually seems potentially very good. That is a, because that is a way more, way better way than uh, a cursed ceremony for this particular deck to be summoning vengeful shades. Um, aerial stratagem, gain evasion two this turn, powerful three this turn, and you discard two cards. Okay, um, that's not bad. The other half of it, you deal 3x3 damage to all enemies and lose, so, and lose 3 mana when discarded. So this is, Aerial Stratagem, when discarded, just is Aether Storm. That seems nifty. Um, so it is either an, a discard enabler or it's an Aether Storm. Uh, and it is an Aether Storm that you potentially, you could end up paying 3 4, or depending on how things shake out, you could pay less than 3 for it. Because if you discard it, we have less than three mana. You still get the effect, and you just have less mana to lose. Uh, Ferric Antics, draw the top one non-mana of your, disc of your discard pile. So it's a regrowth. Then create two Leeching Shivs and discard two. Okay, so that's interesting. So, hmm. So Ferric Antics, you could end up... So if you have no other cards in your hand, you're going to end up basically paying three mana for a regrowth. Or three mana to create a Leeching Shiv. But if you have other cards in your hand... Uh, it, you could discard those for value and end up with a Leeching Shiv and the top card of your discard pile. That's pretty neat. And the other thing is, because you have mana cards that can discard, you could s discard something like, say, Aerial Stratagem to um, a mana card and then pick it back up. Although Aerial Stratagem is kind of a bad example because you lose that mana. Uh, but yeah, that all seems good. And so that is this run. I believe that I am... So I am now most of the way to level 6, but not quite there yet. Um, so yeah, I will be doing a lot more runs with Sharu. I'll be recording several of them. Uh, and I will see you guys for the next one. Depth 3 Guide still definitely happening at some point. I mean, ideally, if this is, you're watching this publicly, the Depth 3 Guide is already up. But, you know, if it isn't, you really get to yell at me. <laughs> Toodles.